Now the um, the Germans are setting up a uh, defensive position. We've got the armoured cars out on the other side of the arena, um, acting in a reconnaissance role, and uh, are now coming under fire. And we can envisage, expect to see the um, the Allies advancing towards us, coming from the far side of the arena. The uh, Reconnaissance units have been have come under fire. They've debussed. The infantry support units are taking up position, anticipating the arrival of the Allied forces who will be advancing, as I say, from the other side of the arena. The uh, German infantry have been engaged. can see Allied forces as represented by the United States coming in from the far right of the arena. Whoa. Dodge weapons carrier and two white half tracks. One of them has been hit. German infantry moving forward to engage the, um, the US Army troops. Who are now withdrawing, <laughs> clearly visiting or anticipating a heavier German force here. The United States unit would have been a reconnaissance unit, indeed using half tracks like this. You're in a better position to see than I am, but I believe with us some more U.S. forces further back behind the um, behind the ridges, and uh, we've got one of the half tracks now withdrawing. The anti-tank gun, German anti-tank, 75 millimeter pack anti-tank unit, opening fire on the withdrawing U.S. forces. The Dodge Weapons Carrier, four-wheel drive section unit, U.S. Army also pulling back now. Bringing up the uh, SDK 251, bringing some heavier support for the infantry, provide them with additional anti-tank and High explosive support. Now we see the uh, Mark III tank with an um, infantry support unit moving forward. Here you can see the infantry keeping close behind the tank, using the tank for protection. And their role is to engage and knock out any enemy anti tank units, which the tank cells might not be able to see and also anybody with a with a bazooka infantry unit US Army infantry unit might be hiding somewhere with a bazooka the German infantry behind the tank their role is to make sure that that is knocked out before it has a chance to fire at the tank on the left hand side of the arena the uh, half trackers disgorged its infantry section, we've gone forward to support the reconnaissance units. Medical services now withdrawing with a casualty. One tends to forget that uh, the important role that medical services provided during World War II on all sides. And clearly the Red Cross displayed so the Allied Air Forces 
didn't attack that particular vehicle and of course the Red Cross was used by both sides to indicate medical services. The Germans used two types of uh, heavy machine gun, the MG 34 and the MG 42, firing a 7.92 millimeter round, um, very high velocity. When firing it uh, was said to sound rather like somebody tearing cloth, sort of ripping sound. I think the um, US forces have now brought in some heavy artillery and are hopefully uh, to them pounding the German positions before they make a more formal assault. The uh, MG42 was used by the Germans from about 1942 until the end of the war and indeed was adopted by the Bundeswehr, the post-war German army, as their standard uh, medium heavy machine gun, uh, except that they changed it to a oh, nice smoke ring. Oh, great smoke ring. Well done. <laughs> um, they changed it to the 7.62 NATO round, but otherwise it's exactly the same weapon as used by the Wehrmacht, the German army, in, uh, from 1942 to the end of the war. Now we can see some heavy stuff coming in, in the back. The, uh, Reconnaissance US Reconnaissance Unit has called up the big boys and uh, first into the arena is the um, US Army M36 Jackson. Sorry. Sorry for the introduction, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to introduce myself. You may have heard the story about uh, an SES patrol in 1991, where uh, things kind of went, went wrong. I want you to look at this, ladies and gentlemen, because I represent an organisation called uh, PTSD Worldwide. If you've read the book Robert Two Zero, you may know me as being Dinger. I have here bucket in my hand. Here around the arena, there are a couple of other people with buckets. It takes 600 pounds to help one combat veteran to overcome PTSD. So any of your help, whether it be a pound, whether it be 50 pence, whatever you can spare, will help somebody overcome PTSD. I'm going to be around very shortly up on this hill here. Any, any contributions would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. As you say, any contributions very gratefully received. We may be enacting a battle here. There are a lot of people in Afghanistan doing the real thing, and they need our support. Right, so we have the uh, US forces moving forward. On the right-hand side as we look at them, there is the uh, M36 Jackson, which is um, an anti-tank gun mounted on a Sherman chassis. A 90 millimeter gun, very powerful, could knock out the big German tanks, the Panthers and the Tigers. Came into service in about 1944. And uh, a little further back, you'll see some armored cars, six-wheel armored cars, 37 millimeter gun, used by US Army reconnaissance units. And in roughly in the middle of the arena, with a very large white star on the, on the front, is another US Army, what they call tank destroyer, which is basically an anti tank gun mounted on a Sherman chassis again. The white star, the object of, hello, it's open fire on us. The object of the white star was to uh, indicate Allied forces to the Allied aircraft um, in order to um, prevent them being shot up by their own forces, their own air forces. It did also, unfortunately, act as a nice target for the Germans. And as you can see, that large white star with a circle around it 
would make a wonderful aiming point for a German anti-tank gun. And as the war went on, the Allies tended to paint them out or rub them out or cover them up to disguise the large white star. The large white star was known as the invasion star and was in fact used on all Allied vehicles, not just those of the United States Army, although it tends to be associated with the US Army. In fact, they, all Allied forces use the White Star as a recognition sign. British, French, Canadian, United States, Belgians, the only people who didn't, in fact, were of course the Russians. And they had a different uh, indicator system. There is a tank moving up on our left, as, or my left as we look at it, it's a, um, it's a, a general chaplain. It's a reconnaissance tank, 75mm gun. Very fast. Introduced in 1944, used by the Americans and the British. You say it's a reconnaissance tank. And will be much the same equivalent in firepower as the Mark III or the Panzer III. It's, uh, they've got two white scout cars in support. Infantry, again, much the same idea. The infantry support the, uh, the tanks, and we can see in the middle of the arena, the US infantry engaged in a close combat. And now we've had the, um, the 251 has been hit. Smoke gushing from the front. U.S. forces now moving forward down the centre. The General Chaffee tank has opened fire. German forces now withdrawing. The American pressure is getting heavier. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> US forces trying to do a flanking movement, a pincer movement, coming down to both sides of the arena, putting the German forces under considerable pressure. There's some German troops here surrendering to the advancing reconnaissance armoured cars, and there's an evacuation of wounded in front of us in one of the Kubelwagens. More heavy gunfire support from the Chaffee tank. We have a mortar team here, German mortar team, just going into action. Trying to give their withdrawing forces some support. Probably a combination of high explosive and... High explosive and uh, smoke shells. See the um, the jeep with a surrendered German soldier in the back. It's got a 30 caliber machine gun mounted on the uh, passenger side. Typical uh, installation for a reconnaissance jeep. The uh, German motorcycle unit in front of us has been captured. American troops on our left are gradually moving forward to uh, outflank the. Uh, German troops behind the armoured uh, personnel carrier. Oh, shoot. German US soldier there using a light machine gun. It's a, it's, it's a, a late version of what we popularly call, think of as the Tommy gun.
sweet, yeah. <laughs>